and welcome to our first Consultants in Conversation Live, where we are hoping to share ideas, insights and inspiration to help you live and lead well. My name is Michelle Hammond, founder of Spa Business School and Teapot, and I am absolutely delighted to be bejeweled to be joined, to be joined by this incredible tribe of leading global spa and wellness consultants. So just going around the kind of board and then I'll let them share a little bit more about themselves. Uh, we have Jennifer Gorman of Jennifer Gorman Associates. We have the fabulous Shelley Hepburn from Shelley Hepburn Consultancy. We have Lisa Starr, leading uh, principal for wine business. We have Lisa Knowles, the uh, consultant for the spa set and neutrality and last but not least the love of my life <laughs> Nigel Franklin <laughs> well, so, as I said this is about us coming together to share ideas insights and inspiration and we'd normally be joined by two other tribe members too um, Amy McDonald from Under a Tree and Sonal Oberoi from Spa Balance unfortunately they couldn't join us for the first session um, but they will be with us for the subsequent sessions so this is an opportunity for you to pose questions, uh, join in the conversation, whether that's now live or through the next sort of following weeks leading up to the next session. And we will talk about the topics that matter most to you and share our thoughts and ideas around the challenges and opportunities that businesses are facing right now within the wellness sector. So we have a breadth of expertise that goes from workplace, residential, destination spa, health clubs, resorts, medical, aesthetics and health. Um, and I think collectively we may not have all the answers but I did work out we probably have around 240 years of experience oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> showing in my brain um, but yeah so there's, there's wow. a wealth of expertise and experience there let, let, let me just adjust the mood lighting a little yeah. bit <laughs> <laughs> lighting becomes even more important as time goes on so I'm just going to get everyone to do a short introduction to themselves you will find everyone's information on the Spa Business School homepage and um, where you'll also be able to navigate to their respective sort of websites and learn more about them if you don't already know. Um, but if we can just do a quick sort of summary um, just to help, help you learn who we are and what we do and why we do it. Um, and then we'll move into uh, the kind of elephant in the room that we're gonna address this sort of session. So Jennifer, would you like to kick us off? Indeed. Hello everyone, I'm Jennifer Gorman. Um, I've been in the hotel and spa industry at five star level for 33 years adjust that mood lighting, Nigel. Um, uh, working in internationally, I started um, in Australia doing a, a three-year hospitality and hotel management training and then came back to England and worked in various um, luxury hotels and spas. I left my GM role 20 years ago to start JG Associates really to navigate um, the wellness and spa path for owners, hotel owners around the world to uh, maximize their opportunity um, for both spa wellness and across the hotel. Amazing. That's me. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Shelley. Oh, hello, everyone. I'm Shelley Hepburn. Um, nice to meet all our tribe again. Um, I've been in the industry for 23, 24 years and um, mostly in luxury level, um, concentrating on kind of openings in, in and around London, like the Grove, um, the Bulgari, the Ned, um, overseeing Penny Hill Park and Gaia. And I, I, I really enjoy kind of new concepts. So I've built lots of new concepts and launched them into to spas um, and hotels, um, more artisan brands, clinical brands, um, like more development for people like uh, Annie de Mamille, um, Morley, um, IS Clinical. Um, so I, I kind of enjoy the, high, the as well as the operation and the setup, so quite enjoy the creative part of the of the role um, of Shelley Hepburn's consultancy, which basically is what I love doing now. So <laughs> <Amazing. laughs> and that's me. Fantastic. Thank you, Shelley. Lisa Knowles. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Knowles. My companies are the Spa Set and Neutrality. Um, I don't like to say how long I'm in. I've been in the industry anymore. I like to say oodles of years. So <laughs> that, take that as, as you wish. So a, a long time. Um, so I started off as a beauty therapist, as probably some of the others did as well. Um, I started my consultancy career also in Australia. And then when I came back to the UK, I was actually headhunted by a consultancy company. 
and that led me on to starting up the spa sets in 2003. I've predominantly worked at the premier end of the spa market, both in the UK and overseas. I've rep represented quite a number of brands on their own branded spas. And I, you, I was one of the first consultants many years ago to um, start uniquely designing treatments and um, de treatment development. Um, and that's led me to work with lots of award-winning global brands and setting up training schools. And more recently, I trained as a nutritional therapist and wellness coach, which is something I've added. And that's, that's the neutrality arm of my business. Um, and I now offer wellness programs and a true wellness um, angle to, to spa. So it's a little Amazing. bit of me. Thank you, Lisa. And Lisa Starr. Good day, everyone. I'm so invite. I'm happy to be have been invited to join this group. I'm looking forward to our discussions. I have been in the industry for about 35 years. As many of my colleagues, I started as a uh, technician. I was a makeup artist. I had my own brand, and I worked in salons because we didn't have spas back then. And uh, I have been in every aspect of management in day spas, chain spas, resort and hotel spas. And I've been a consultant for over 20 years um, around the US and I work internationally. I lecture at trade shows. I'm a journalist and write for multiple trade publications and I am an educator. I have an online training course for spa management as well as other spa operations courses. So happy to be here. Fantastic. Thank you, Lisa, so much. And last but not least, Nigel. Tell us a little uh, bit. About Hi, guys. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, my name is Nigel Franklin. I'm the um, founder of The Spa Whisperer and uh, the co-founder of Moss Wellness Consultancy and um, a beautiful new skin wellness product called Moss of the Isles. Um, yeah, I have been in this industry oodles of years also. <laughs> and uh, I, started, I started my life as a journalist here in San Francisco. I'm in San Francisco now. Um, and then uh, moved on to become a therapist and then moved on to be a consultant working at kind of the, the, the level of the therapist in terms of empowering therapists to deliver what I call the art of therapy. Um, and that has just kind of morphed into... Um, general spa development spa design wellness concepts and wellness design um but yeah i, I also luckily i've uh, spent my life in the luxury se sector um developing spas for aman resorts and four seasons and shangri-la and et cetera, et cetera. so it's yeah i'm not mad at my gig it's been a good ride in a sweet shop opportunity isn't it <laughs> yeah most of us kind of enjoy and, uh, and experience. And um, most of you will sort of know that um, I also started as a therapist and have kind of worked through managing and directing lots of spas and resorts uh, globally before setting up the consultancy and education companies we now run, which is Spa Business School and Teapot. So Spa Business School focuses on business building. So helping people get more profit, higher performance and more productivity from their businesses and Teapot, where we focus on putting the health into wellness and educating more around uh, cancer so dementia, depression, um, heart conditions, diabetes, obesity, all of the kind of top health conditions that are impacting our communities right now, and of course our colleagues um, and clients as they present. So, um, today we're going to talk about uh, health in a little bit more detail. I don't think we can't, um, as obviously the pandemic has affected all of us globally and touched us all in, in lots of different ways. And I think it was important that in this first session, uh, we kind of look at what that meant to us. So individually, um, you know, we'll talk about obviously the pandemic in itself, what we've learned from it, uh, what we've observed um, from, you know, the industry, what we've seen changing, uh, what we've seen some of the challenges being, and of course, what we hope the opportunities will be um, and what we can see that they will be uh, for ourselves and our businesses as we kind of move forward. And hopefully that will help you shape some of the challenges that you're facing sort of right now. So um, just kind of throwing it out there, you know, obviously this pandemic came out of nowhere. Um, and as much as we collectively know, we need to brace ourselves for a future where we might see more of these types of experiences 
uh, for lots of different reasons. Um, but, you know, here, here we are sort of what, seven sort of nearly eight months sort of on now. Um, what, what have you learned? I mean, it's still not gone away. You know, we're, we're all still facing it. And Nigel had an interesting travel back <laughs> by hazmat suits yesterday. Um, to yes. sort of, you, know, you know, that has become the new normal, the word we all hate, um, but can't find an alternative for. What, what has it meant for you personally? What have you learned from it? Uh, has that changed from how it started at the beginning to, to how you feel now? Um, and, and sort of what have you witnessed to, you know, with the people around you? Well, I'll jump in there. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I, as many of us, I traveled extensively before this. Uh, I was gone two to three times a month. And so now to have been home all this time, uh, yeah, I think it was a really good way to, to stop you in your tracks and make you be more intentional about what you do. You know, we get into a groove and we are a slave to our schedule. I, as much as anyone, I have every day a list and where I have to be and what I have to do as we all do to get things done. But we spend a few months letting the list go and just being, and that was a very valuable lesson, I think. Um, the, the second thing I'll mention quickly is that we all work in wellness and we probably observe a, a healthy lifestyle. We exercise, we eat right, we tend to our sleep, et cetera. And so I never had any fear in this time that I would become sick or that my family would because we're healthy people. And I thought, wow, that's, that's what we're giving others, right? We're giving them the confidence to be well and to care for themselves so they're not afraid of every illness out there. And I, it made me feel like we're really, we're really on the right, on the right track, track with the work that we do. Yeah, amazing. I would, I, would, I would think also just what I'm experiencing through our conversations and with you guys especially, that there's, you know, before C19, there was this idea, this kind of, people's kind of foundational wellness is kind of un this kind of unconscious approach to, to things that make you well, like your family, your friends, events, and you've stripped all of those things. You no longer have access to, 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 to these. So I think people have become a lot more conscious, certainly to Lisa's, uh, to Lisa's point, um, and much more intentional with what it is that they're doing and their own personal approach to wellness. Because I, I said this, I said this a few times now, but We've, we've been taught two really valuable lessons in the fragility of society and uh, in our own mortality. You know, the two, these two fundamental foundational things that we potentially take for granted. Um, and we've been taught a lesson. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the lesson. So, I, you know, there's, there's very little to celebrate here at all, but I... I am um, looking forward to a much more conscious approach to individual wellness. I think people are going to get it now more than ever. I think I totally, totally agree with you, Nigel, actually. I, I felt exactly the same. I think after all this, some good must come out of it. Um, and many people I've spoken to, even though it's been a really hard and tragic time and we're seeing people being made redundant and uh, losing loved ones, a lot of people have said it's been a great opportunity to put that put to what you both said, really, Lisa and Nigel, to that, for that pause button. I think, in particular, for myself, um, unlike you, Lisa, I did never found I never found time for myself. It was you know, eat, sleep, repeat. I have children. I have a busy job, so I feel like I can be a better ambassador for the industry because I'm now practicing what I preach. You know, I tell people to relax, and da, da, da. <laughs> Nigel's laughing. <laughs> I don't meditate yet, Nigel. <laughs> I meditate yes. just walking the dogs and plant, yeah. you know, I started to plant, plant seeds in March at lockdown and I watched all, all, the, all my vegetables grow and then I eat with the season now. And little things like that, just tiny, tiny approaches. And I think it, it makes, we're, we're meant to be leading the industry and we need to, we need to like I say, practice what we, practice, uh, what we preach and it's our mantra, isn't it? Health and wellness. Um, so for me personally, I have, I've grown immensely um, throughout this whole process. And like Nigel said, I think something good will come out of it. Um, I can see it change. I can see change already. 
I think we are all looking better for it as well, actually. We're looking a little bit less tired and we're, we are all practicing yes, what we preach. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I will, I will yeah, speak for myself. For myself. You know, I was saying earlier, I've never given myself so much facial time um, and just time to cleanse in the evening. And But one thing I think is that this there's, there's comfort in a sense that this has affected absolutely everyone, you know, from the richest people in the world to the least well-off people in the world to the happiest to the least happy. You know, we're, we've all been affected by this. No one um, has got through this easily. Um, you know, lots of people lost their jobs, people that we couldn't ever imagine would lose their job or industries that we could never imagine have gone down. And, um, you know, there, there's great support in being together and chatting about it and, and finding our own way through everything. I think I've learned to be um, calmly aware and uh, much more conscious of my everyday decisions. And definitely for me, this isn't, I'm not waiting for this to pass. You know, I'm living mm. in a new landscape. And I think that that realization has helped me. I think we were all waiting for it to pass seven months ago. Uh, we were encouraged to believe that lockdown would, you know, get us all back on track. And we're still in this and we we might be in it for a long time and, and that's that's helped me a lot to say okay this is my new landscape and i need to navigate my way through this whatever this is and not wait for it to go back to normal and i that's think that's a, a great help I, I, yeah. I think that's the key difference between response and evolution because yeah. i think when this i think when this happened there was response and noise beautiful noise but noise and i think now we're just in this process of evolving from it mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. And understanding what, exactly what this means and exactly how this manifests in in every capacity but you know certainly well I, I think we i think the whole world was living this uh, fast lane life um and of course you can't take away the tragedy that's happened there and and how awful it's been but i think it has allowed all of us with myself and people i know whether it's been in the business or friends and family it's certainly given time to reflect or reflect on your lives, as, as you've all said. So just really to echo what, what you, you've all just said. Um, and I, I think sometimes when we're forced into a situation, some good can come out of it because it does stop us in our, in our tracks. Um, whereas we would have never taken time out. We wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't be reinventing ourselves. We would just keep plowing on and plowing on and plowing on for forever. So I think that the good that's come out of this for hopefully the majority, I'm not taking it away for those that, that it's not been so good, um, that it's allowed time to reflect and to think, well, hold on, I was living this crazy life maybe I can't live that anymore. This is, I need to be doing something else. And so that, that for me is where, where some of the good will come out of it because I do live a healthy life, but it's actually live a very, even healthier life and, and take another avenue that I've always wanted to take, but I've never had the time to turn down that avenue. I've always been, oh, I'll get there in the moment. I'll get there, I'll get there next week. I'll get there next month. Oh, it'd be next year. Well, actually, it was thrust upon me, so. And I think, you know, it's what's been really beautiful for me, I think, is to watch that actually, how quickly, because we were forced, how quickly we have all learned, and, and we were probably in a, in, a, in a sort of more privileged position because we, we talk about this day in, day out, but how we've, we, you know, the, the whole world has learned what's really important. You know, we-, we Priorities. Need to, yeah, Priorities. time with family. Anything. Yeah, you know, talking. Mm you know yes I have missed you know being on an airplane and I can't lie I've missed some isolation in a lovely spa with a robe without having to think about masks and, and the rest of it but you know ultimately we're, we're missing the social interaction it's that connection collaborative community um, that we've kind of missed but actually then most people have repurposed I mean I'm, I'm hearing people talk about getting to know neighbors for the first time people they never knew yeah, which is sad. <laughs> yeah, sad yeah. that they didn't know. Yeah, then yeah. But it, travel away, but, but going. Oh my god, I didn't realise I have this beautiful river at the end of my drive. <laughs> <laughs> this beautiful kind of garden landscape I never knew was there, and I've noticed this building, and I've seen. Mm. It, and I've mm -hmm. noticed. Mm -hmm. That's all part of slowing down, isn't it? As well, but again, being forced to kind of to kind of really embrace our location. 
yeah. yeah rather than lust for somewhere else which I have to say is where I'm forever at I mean I'm married to an Italian so we're forever lusting to be there or to be in Austria or to be somewhere else um, and actually to just you know we, we love where we are but we we see it as a base um, but actually suddenly having to get out and really be part of it and think this this could be as far as we could go for a long time who knows and but then give us a very different perspective but don't you think though that that uh, everything that you just said that that gives us access to potentially more um confronting aspects of wellness like the feeling that for the feelings of isolation like things that we, we, the things that we would never necessarily have access to, uh, you, you know, things that are just just more more personal. But I think, you know, when people are able to see their families, you know, you're you're, lo you're in lockdown, you can't see your family. That's a grief. Then you can see your family, but you hug can't hug them. That's a grief. And all of these things point directly to isolate the feelings of isolation. And I think this is a great opportunity to address as I said, the more confronting elements of wellness, these things that I don't know, necessarily are taboo, but things that people either don't want to talk about or aren't conscious of it, so can't talk about it. So I, 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 th I think wellness just kind of grew another arm yeah. in a sense. Um, and I think and I think more accessible, you know, lots of us possibly or lots of people have felt they have to hide their uh, lack of confidence or their um, depression or and this has opened up a great big world of hey you know we're all in a stressful situation and we've all got not the PTSD of the not the P aspect yet because we're not post but we've got traumatic stress disorder to some degree we're all going through that to a different degree and I think it's happily opened up a world that says I'm struggling and I can't handle this whereas yeah. prior to that possibly those people wouldn't have said that out loud so help is more accessible even if it's only talking to our friends and our families to to chat through that to find support and and to navigate our way through it and I'm really pleased about that you know it's, it's not a taboo subject anymore and as you say it's, it's right there facing all of us on a day-to-day -day basis and we can do something about that now because it's so obvious to us yeah you can do something well, to help those further... people much more obviously Further to Jennifer's point, it, it's been a great leveler, like nothing I've ever experienced in my lifetime. I mean, we've seen trauma in the world, recession, war, but it's usually somewhat more regional. This has been like everyone understands we're all mm -hmm. in the same boat. And I think it has made people kinder, you know, mm -hmm. and a little more em empathic to each other. But as has been said, it brings the wellness component forward, which is wonderful for our work and our businesses mm. yes of course surviving this has been a challenge whatever country you're in but the awareness of consumers of the role we can now play in their wellness has never been a better opportunity in my opinion and, yeah, the, and need, think, the need for it has never yeah. been as great an opportunity it's like yeah. the generosity thing you just touched on that lisa i've seen that so much more people being more generous and kind um whether it's you know uh, companies that have started to make masks or you know hand sanitizer that would normally be <laughs> making cleansers and toners and uh, how everybody came together um, and just going back onto the depression and anxiety thing I know a lot of people that suffered and because we were forced outside to do more walking and to be with nature have actually said they've seen a huge improvement which kind of takes us back to where are we going in the spa world that everybody needs to to think about the concepts outside as well as inside, whether it's foraging or, I'm in the Southwest, so it's like wild swimming and all those kinds of things. <laughs> um, but I think it's really important, isn't it? I, I think getting back to nature is really, I, I've seen improvements in some people that were really, really suffering. Let's mm. just get outside and go for a walk. It's simple, it's just the simple things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Lisa about being a leveler what I've noticed is although there's a risk of death by zoom and sort of you know sessions and seminars and stuff like that sort of going on which I mean everyone is saying to me my gosh you know how do I get rid of my dark surface and just being on a screen so much more than normal but I think the great thing about the leveler is people are saying to me from a workplace point of view with some of the stuff I do in that direction is actually normally in a day-to-day -day working environment they don't notice the fact that it's actually just been such a fast-paced outcome focused you know what are you doing how are you doing it let's get through this let's get on with it and actually suddenly now because everyone's feeling that challenge and and, and sort of you know need to adapt that people are starting with hey how are you yeah. 
happened in the workplace necessarily. And it's just that human element has really jumped through because we are all in, you know, the, the same sort of storm and, and going through the same sort of um, experience that it just gives us all an olive branch that I think has enabled people cross ages, cross gender, cross race to, to kind of really reach out and say, I see you. And I think ultimately that's what we want, isn't it? Do you know what? I, I noticed this. I mean, I'm an exaggerated person anyway, but I noticed yesterday, you know, traveling from Munich to San Francisco, that the way I was communicating with, pe with people was just more exaggerated. I mean, this was, it was a conscious thought that I had. I just, I was like, just trying to like exude like friendliness. You know? just Do you think because... it's also because of wearing masks that yeah, we that's have I mean. to yeah. sort of overcompensate uh -huh. with yeah. the rest of our bodies? Yeah, because it's like, and I, and I, I, when I got on the plane and I was like, God, man, you sound like a game show host. Calm it down. <laughs> and, and it's your new I, career, Nigel. <laughs> yeah. and, the next one. But then, but I, but I was like, no, I, it's because you know, it's, I mean, certainly in Western society, I mean, we're we're just a face forward society. So I was, yeah, I just it's funny you say that, Michelle, because that I thought that yesterday. I was like, I've suddenly become this more of this. And, and I think we look at other people and say even if we're not speaking, I understand. Yeah. We, you know, we yeah. all know, I think we'd all agree that we all know so many more people than we did before, whether it be new acquaintances or new colleagues. We're speaking, you know, if you live in a small village, you, you tend to say hello to everyone. If you're in central London, no one speaks to you. I think now we do speak to each other. There is so much good that's come, but never forgetting the people who are still having a really difficult time. Yeah. And for me, this is how we can encourage and, and educate and support the people out there who are ha, have had really positive um, aspects from this, but have also, you know, had negative or are still feeling, you know, feeling the pinch and, and finding it but really I, difficult. But I think that's when you have uh, people in our position in this very, you know, it's a unique situation. Of, so we are in the unique position to try to mm. leverage. You guys mm -hmm. know I don't like the word leverage when in relation to this, but we are in the position where we have to leverage something from this and you know, to take wellness to uh, to an evolution that, you know, now covers whatever this is. And that's up to us. I've talked to so uh, Sonal many times about this and being standing on this precipice of, uh, and what a unique and humbling experience to, to be in this position where the next phase of evolution for our industry depends on people in our position. Mm -hmm. What a unique situation and, and blessed. And, and true wellness. I think it's, you know, it's separating the word that's branded around a lot and can be confusing to the consumer to what, what really is true wellness and, and yeah. you know, all the multifaceted aspects that that brings to our lives to help us through and giving us the tools to cope with anything that's thrown at us as much as and we I, can. And I, I think for spas, I think pre-COVID and a number of spas or the industry in general were we, we jumped on the bandwagon of wellness um and i think a lot of people didn't really know what they were doing um so with with this i'm, I'm hoping that some of these spas can embrace that and as nigel says with people like our, ourselves with our backgrounds to to encourage that that they tr can truly in, embrace wellness in in a whole raft of areas rather than thinking wellness is maybe having a hot stone treatment and burning some aromatherapy oils and letting someone sit in a dark room yes there is elements of wellness there but that's not true wellness wellness now there it's opened up these opportunities for spas to to do so so much and really be in the moment um, and I think that that's it, it, exciting to, to be able to embrace that. Um, totally, we're in a new, we're totally in a new landscape. We're yeah, in, and we're landscape. in a new landscape. And what we need, you know, the world has changed. We've changed, and what we need has changed. And you know, everybody across the planet is thinking, you know, I, I need to be well. I need to be healthy. I need to have better immunity. I, I need some guidance on how to do this, whether I'm going to spend some money going to spa or whether I'm just practicing things at home and, um, you know, having some wellness time to myself. You know, what, what are those different components that says I can practice wellness to a better degree to be a healthier person yeah. going forward? And I think those that have embraced that, like Shelley was saying, it's made people go out more, go for a walk, get some fresh air, and then 
maybe people are cooking healthier meals or they're doing some exercise maybe they're doing some meditation right yeah um, doing all of this at home but they want to go the next step so they're going to start looking for places mm. to go somewhere to to be guided and help to that to that next level level and this opportunity for spas to embrace that i think yeah. is phenomenal yeah. i mean look wellness wellness has as many dimensions as you want to mm. give it you know yeah, and 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 you know the hot stone massage is a hot stone massage <laughs> but you know to have like true authentic holistic well this approach where you have people like us who are standing on this like the sidelines mostly like a bunch of hippies trying to you know tell people what real wellness is and they're like no it's a glass of, sh it's a glass of champagne and a hot stone yeah and, and you know and here we are here we are suddenly we have validity like suddenly we have our voice yeah uh, and, and that's kind of you know, but i'm interested to, to know then how this trickles across to um our response uh, and support of therapists because mm. now if therapists are coming into a, an evolved um, multi-dimensional industry mm. how then do we bring them you know yeah. up across wherever they need to come yeah. from yeah yeah uh, because you said it I mean we're now not dealing with you know one dimensional hot stone massage which hot stone massages are lovely but yeah what we're dealing with just before we get into kind of futures there, what, what have you seen looking back over the last sort of seven or eight months? What have you seen from within the industry or from other industries that has just inspired you? That has just where you've just seen someone leverage incredibly or, you know, sort of reinvent themselves in a really incredible way. Um, you know, what, what has what has kind of really stood out for you if you kind of think back over over what you've witnessed in the last seven or eight months? I think for, for me, it's seeing businesses not just spas businesses reinvent themselves they they haven't stood still and it will be those that that will survive those that have reinvented um and thought of, di of different ideas um, and thinking very differently and that's inspired me rather than this whole keep doing the same thing and, and expecting a different result um, it, that's not going to make change. It's those that have embraced it. And I've seen that from a, a restaurants to, to hotels um, and, and moving forward. In fact, I, I was at a meeting yesterday with, with a hotel and I came out was so excited how they're just now going to embrace sustainability in its true guys it, it not this oh let's just do a bit of recycling in the in the office this is across all their sites and it's everything from the food they use every bit of fish that they get a fish they're using all of it right the way through to the wellness of, of their staff and then all the bits that go in between and it was really about trying to make a better future and they just haven't sat still or stood still They've just thought, right, let's embrace this. The world is a different place and we need to move with it. So I, I, I've i seen that. I think Jennifer and I have talked um, and we've seen that local businesses around us that, like for, I know Jennifer, you said about your local pub, they now sell gorgeous vegetables and they'll continue doing that mm -hmm. because it's supporting the community. So that's what I've seen. People that are thinking outside the box, which is not, I don't particularly like that term, but they're just thinking, right, I can't keep doing the same thing here. I've I've got to think very, very differently. And that's what I found so inspiring. Here, here in the US, we're seeing the supermarkets um, reconfigure themselves. The, the one that I shop at nearby has taken out their whole flower section at the front and they've made a staging area for delivery. Because now, you know, delivery was always available, but nobody used it before yeah. the pandemic. And mm. now people said, wow, why didn't I do this before? The groceries show up at my door. And so the, the markets are building out areas to stage the food for delivery. And, and further to that, I think that, that we have to think that way in our industry, too. What will we do differently? You know, the owners that I'm working with are not necessarily rushing back to Let's bring up our old menu and let's just do that again. I mean, we need to think, okay, what else? Like to Nigel's point of wellness, it's not just facials and massages. What else can we do? We have to really be open. 
You did a yeah. piece recently, Lisa, didn't you? To just give us a brief kind of synopsis on that. People that didn't see it, it was in Spa Business Magazine, wasn't it? Where you kind of talk, you, you went and looked at a couple of sort of business. I did. Thanks, Michelle. I was in LA back when I used to travel. I think it was in February. And um, I stumbled upon two businesses that are less than a mile apart and are one is called a social wellness club. So I went in, what's that? And it's very interesting what they do. Uh, hyperbaric chambers, cryotherapy, sauna. It's called Remedy Place. It's owned by a doctor. Um, they have a social area. They have a, a movement room. They have a bar where they serve kombucha, no alcohol. It's beautiful and comfy and dark. You pay a monthly fee and you get access to these things. No therapist. And the other place called Next Health down the street similar, very different looking, but the same idea. You go in for something that helps your health and you manage it yourself as a consumer. So I thought, well, this is a fascinating thing. And, and now I did write an article for Spa Business. It's in the current issue, uh, if you like to look it up. But I've been investigating more of these kinds of stories of reinvention. And I'll just share one more that we'll publish shortly. A business in San Luis Obispo in California called Sloco. Uh, a little spa, she did massage and facials, and she started to add wellness modalities and the customers were not interested and she was really like depressed about it. She bought a Soma Dome meditation pod and the clients just wanted the same old. Well, I talked to her six weeks ago and she said she cannot believe the difference. People are lining up to try all the new things she has. They're, in, in, they're uh, invested in the idea, they're excited about it, and and she changed her name from spa to Sloco Health and Wellness. So yes, there's a lot of interesting things out there. I'm not saying throw out the facials and massages, don't get me wrong, but what else can we do? And then circling back to Nigel's point, you know, we have therapists in our employ that have specific skills. Um, who else will we need to bring in and how will this all work together? No one knows yet. Yeah, for me, I think for sure, anyone that had a strong digital and online sales platform ability before this, you know, has fared well, they've, they've fared much better their business or an arm of their business could continue. But I was saying to, to you guys last time that there was, you know, Michelin starred restaurants in London who would never ever have thought to do a takeout menu and overnight redevelop their offering to allow takeout or enable takeout at, you know, high level and had not a new arm to their business that was bringing in very high revenues and, and very high profits because they had no team to have to serve that food. So their food costs went right down or their food wastage rather went right, right down and their food costs went right down, their revenue shot up. So I think we can take those ideas and put, look at our industry and you know, put those ideas into our industry and say, how can we do what we've been doing differently in order to gain more revenue and potentially higher profit without, without cutting that customer that guest experience at all, in fact, enhancing it. So, you know, we, when we see good things around, okay, that's, that's a really good idea. How can I bring that into my own business and say, let me relook at this and, and repurpose. And uh, last yeah. Point, about the retail angle, you were talking to quite a few of your brands and some of them were straight on it, weren't they? And they were, they were looking at how they could get that product into their customer's hands without having the customer in the, in the door. Exactly. I mean, that's it. Stock, you know. uh, I mean, that's it really. I mean, the techie part, I mean, I think some some companies have learned really fast. They've been forced into it. They've learned, they've embraced it. Um, and they've been able to keep running their business even without the bricks and mortar. And I think that's key, really. It's not just about the bricks and mortar. It's also about the community around them, keeping in touch, keeping engaged, um, keeping the business going. Because we don't know, this could happen again. There's local shutdowns. So as well as, like, we go back to the point you raised earlier it's not going to be the same ever again and it's time time for change and it's time to evolve and and I think the freelance uh, market is again it's it's you know more people are being becoming self-employed and doing freelance where they've been pushed out maybe as far as a therapist no longer has a job um, and you know talking about the F&B and the takeaway service you know look at urban look at how well they're doing it's 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 changing isn't it people want treatments in their home designers are now designing more treatments at home so it's 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 just reaching all the, the consumers in a different way um there they are you know yeah right i thought home third spaces and and sort of you know in a different uh, way. I, th I thought you know 
when this first happened, when the world went into lockdown, my first thought was, this, we just can't have nice things. And then I, I, what, as, it, as it's gone on, I mean, it doesn't, it seems like yesterday we were talking about therapists in full PPE. And I'm, what I'm loving about just, you know, being a part of it, but also standing back and, and kind of just listening in um, is that every idea currently has value. Everything is on the table. And in fact, we can have nice things. Sometimes we just need to give them a bit of a wedgie. But, you know, here, here we are redefining our industry, other industries. And it, it, it's interesting to see, the, to, to see the human response and the human acceptance and allowance of, of, of change of this. Yeah. So what is the future? I mean, looking at it from your perspective now, what you're seeing in your own business and what you're seeing in, in kind of the people you're currently supporting um, and, and historically have been supporting, what are, what are the things that are exciting you the most? What do, what do you think the biggest change are? We know there's lots of conversation at the moment about touchless techniques um, sort of leading the way. Um, so in addition to that, what, what else do you think is, is the future? And what do you hope the, f- the future will, uh, will sort of change towards or move towards? I think as we're evolving, our guests are evolving. You know, we we need to educate our guests on how they evolve through this and navigate their way through this. They're looking for um, guidance, as are we as a as a team team a collaborative team together. So I think that you know, we for me, we've got three types of guests. We've got the the very cautious guest who probably won't come to a hotel or a spa anytime soon, but they still need to learn how to make their life better. Um, so we can guide those people from afar at home. There's the you know, semi-cautious who will come to a, a trusted spa and a hotel that they know well, perhaps that they've been to before, and they will have some treatments tentatively. Um, they might have, you know, they might use the pools and they might have a manicure, pedicure, perhaps not a facial or a massage. And then we have the group who um, you know, are fully embracing anything that's on offer and will come to a trusted hotel and spa and have those treatments. And each of those three are, you know, are footfall for us they're not footfall only because they walk over our threshold they're footfall because they they need our guidance and we can uh sell to them and educate them um so for me that's really exciting and as as shelly said the the communities around us the you know the online the takeaways or whatever it is we've we've got a duty i think to look after all of our potential guests not just those who walk through our door and there are different arms to business that we can look at there the remote business the cautious footfall business on site and the, the you know, the, the guests that we had before as such. So. Um, um, just to add to that, I would say, and it's also following up. We've always talked about home care, but I think the next step is, is support continuing after their visit to the spa. It's not just take your pot of cream home and use it, but an, another avenue of how they can support, whether it is using some form of, media or or being a bit techy but continuing that that support i think that that's the other add-on uh, rather than just the old-fashioned style of home care um thinking i don't know whether I've, I've spoken to people about doing some sort of membership or somewhere where a guest can actually log on and get continuing information uh, um, so yeah, I think that there's a there's another arm to that. So but yeah, I totally agree with Jennifer. How is it? Well, how is definitely. It? Sorry, Nigel. It's Hello. about that the tech part. We can't just go back to the spa and touch them for that one hour they are with us, and then there's nothing until their next visit. You know, as much as we're tired of Zoom, uh, there are great ways to reach into homes and have that ongoing conversation. That my other colleagues have a reference. So how do we combine, come to the facility for treatments and education and products, and then at home, we'll continue that conversation. I, I think that our model has to have those two legs, as we said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, relationship, isn't it? And that's what people want more than ever now is that genuine human connection to feel they're cared for, even post the transaction in the till, which is kind of what it's been a lot historically, hasn't it? It's very transactional. Uh, so how, is, how is it in the UK? Um, because I, I'm, I mean, I kind of assume that the kind of key drivers have shifted from, you know, the question at least, is this relaxing to, is this essential? Is that how, how, how you, is that tempering or do you think it's? I'm gonna I, th- I think essential 
has been relaxing as such. I think we were also, you know, the, what people needed when they came out was some relaxation and some touch. So yeah. to have a massage was was both essential and relaxing. And I think those two kind of go hand in hand. But I think it's, you know, we, 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 were, in, we were in shock mode, then we were in survival mode, and now we're in navigation mode. And we're, those, those, that journey is evolving for us every single day. And we've got to go with that. I think, and where our treatments were hands-on. And, and so we just changed the offering to allow us to work within the guidelines. That's, that's, the, that's the survival mode. And now the navigation mode is moving on from that and looking at different treatments and, and different ways of applying them. As we've said, touchless, touchless therapies or hands-off therapies. But also this, this remote um, client for me is a really valuable client because they're the ones who are really cautious. They're the ones that are possibly still having the most concern and fear about coming out who might need us even more than those who aren't so cautious and can come out. Yeah. So that's a really interesting um, um, arm for me. And I would, you know, there's, there's, as Lisa said, there's memberships, but that, that membership could be educational. That could be, you know, monthly or bi-monthly retail packages that come out with, with facial treatment videos or, or, um, literature to tell them how to do those treatments at home. So, so those, those are nearly needing us most, those clients. We mustn't forget that, that. And private spaces within our businesses. You know, I'm looking at businesses who are putting, who are investing now, who are putting um, saunas and steams in their villas or, or bedrooms. So that there's an element of spa individually for the private person without necessarily coming down to the spa. I think we can also, if you look at look at the retail, a lot of the retail brands working remotely, they have all jumped on the whole social media of having one on one consultation with with a therapist. You book your time with a therapist on on a Zoom, and she'll take you through um, a treatment. You buy your little box of products, and she'll give you that facial through Zoom, and you you you. Uh, it's a DIY. I think mm -hmm. spas can can take that on as well. The retail brands have have done that so well. You just go on to Instagram and they're all doing it. And I think um, some better than most, but we could certainly offer that in in spas as 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 well. Mm. Uh, I think there is a wide audience out there. I mean, I can only speak. I do lots more in the workplace and and sort of residential. But there's a wide audience who are not afraid. Mm. You know, from for their from their own well being. And actually realise the value of, of investing in themselves. And so actually just locally, and we moved here at the beginning of lockdown, and we have lots of complementary therapy clinics and, and small spas and salons sort of locally. Um, and the day it was okay to do it, I have to say I was the first client in the door. Mm. Um, and I was like, God, someone lay their hands on me. Um, you know, <laughs> desperate for that sort of physical touch. And, 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 and actually, within a very short period of time, they were all telling me they were full. They, they were busy. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly things like sports massage, radial massage, massage. The acupuncturist has now got a wait list that she's never had before. Um, you know, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, all of these kind of wider, more holistic um, sort of things that we know and kind of take for granted, but the, the average kind of person on the street maybe not heard of or didn't really understand. Mm -hmm. Um, are starting to kind of want to delve deeper into how they help their physical, mental and emotional well-being. And I think a lot of the fear people had around COVID at the beginning, I think has definitely changed over the course of the last seven or eight months. And people are now realizing that actually, if, if I have less risk, the healthier I am, it's worth the risk to invest more in my health and well-being. So what can I do to help myself more? And a lot of that is get out and see someone or have a treatment or, or an experience. Do you know, just what you just said about wanting someone to touch you. I have a Bowen therapist that comes to my house. And after, when she first came and it had been months, I mean, I have a fiance, I mean, you know, I'm touched. But when, but when <laughs> we're glad to know that. <laughs> Time's up, but, Nigel. <laughs> um, but was she, I mean, she's totally chill and, and, and energetically, she's such a match for me. But I, there was, I had this, this visceral response when she first came after months of just holding her and that, and I, and it took me back. I mean, I'm a pretty tactile person. I know that, but like it was more I mean, it was just transcendent this just this need to be held mm -hmm. and by this angel of a woman and it was i i I'd never i've never experienced that that mm -hmm. i've never experienced that need in me before 
Mm -hmm. Well, I must say, from, from being a wellness coach and, and a nutritional therapist or naturopathic therapist, it, it, it is a physical thing. It, it, and it, and um, it's all about the oxytocin. And that's the one thing that's just worried me throughout the, this entire um, pandemic is, is the lack of touch. And we, as, as mammals, we need to release that oxytocin. It, it makes us feel happy. It's our bonding hormone. It's, it's the hormone that's released oh. when we have a baby and, and, and put the baby flesh on flesh. It's the, it's the hormone that's released when we stroke an animal. So if you're not being able to touch somebody, then stroke a dog, stroke a cat, stroke oh, a guinea yeah. pig. You release that oxytocin <laughs> and we need to do it. In lockdown, it's like... <laughs> every, every pet's become <laughs> a therapy like, animal off. now. Yeah, they've been driven mad by yeah, being stroked. But even in business, we may... Well, we're very touchy-feely people, so that's a bit different, but we don't even shake hands and even that releases no. oxytocin. So get out there and just somehow if you can touch a shoulder stroke a dog whatever release that because that will release those happy hormones and that's what you were getting Nigel you were getting that whole oxytocin release <laughs> <laughs> you, you wanted your cuddle yeah. hormone <laughs> and while we, we all nice. we're all familiar with touch whilst we love it when it happens pre pre-covid mm -hmm. we take it for granted we took it for granted mm. you know if you've gone for a few weeks or, or months without human touch like you said Nigel, you you have you have some touch you just it's like being on a diet and suddenly having the food you want to eat yeah. you taste yeah. that food so much better than yeah. you would have done ordinarily i think it's it it's it's making us realize just how important these simple simple things are in our life mm, yeah. and how we must prioritize them you know it's, it's simplicity that's one thing i've learned that it's we've got all these things around us and we can potentially for those that can buy nice things that's fabulous but none of it brings you happiness partic particularly in isolation you know it's the simplest things as you said shelly going out for a walk and hearing the birds sing and smelling the flowers and noticing things, the river at the end of the road, Michelle, that you hadn't known was, <laughs> known was there before. I mean, it's just joyous. It really is joyous. So there's lots of things people can do that they might not be doing that they think are sound crazy and sound all a bit geeky and uh, or whatever uh, that do really help. You know, we know that and it's, it's true. Yeah. I think, as we've all said, you know, what, what's beautiful about the position we're in now from a wellness point of view is people get it. People suddenly understand what it what wellness means, and I mean that from the wider kind of global community, and they understand the part they can play in it. Um, and I think that offers a huge opportunity for, for all of us to, to really kind of excel much more rapidly and, and to, to kind of delve deeper and, and evolve faster than, than we would have had the pandemic sort of not come along. So we're going to look to wrap up. Um, just before we do, I mean, obviously, anybody sort of watching, and, and we'll put these out. Um, as, as kind of accessible videos via all of our social media channels as well. So people can kind of access them at different times. But any questions you have for any of the consultants, any kind of burning hot topics you want us to discuss, any particular challenges you're facing or opportunities you see that you want to share or talk about, then please do reach out. You can either add comments into the video, um, you can direct message us, or you can email us at learn at spabusinessschool.com and we will bring those up, share them amongst ourselves and bring those up on the next session. But just before we leave you, um, word of wisdom, top learning or top tip, um, fav favorite quote, whatever it is, something to, to sort of inspire, um, to, to sort of leave our, our sort of viewers with, um, who wants to kick us off? I will. I did actually look this quote at, I thought I'm, I need to get a quote. Um, and I, I, it was I, Einstein, we can't go wrong with Einstein. Um, <laughs> and it's, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, think think a little bit differently, and just on the on wellness, don't forget your staff as well. It, this is across the board. Wellness is not about just your clients; it's, it's your staff. It, it's all encompassing. Amazing. Thank mm. you. I'll, I'll agree with that one. The, your staff are your you know your biggest asset. They are your business really. So everyone's got to be well and, and never assume that your boss isn't wobbling either. If you're having a wobble, speak out. You know, everybody has had a wobble and it's fine to have a wobble. I think, um, you know, on a personal level, just keep yourself well and keep going and, you know, 
think on the on the positive side because there are positives and focus on those mm. and you know the the, the less positive uh, will be outweighed hopefully by the positive and you can better see your way through those less positives if you've got a positive mindset yeah and also we talk about the clients a lot but all, you know what I always found great um, when I was a director in, in London we had a a network and we would I'd say come over come and have a treatment and we would like send people you know when do your staff or when do you have treatments I think that's really important we talk about bowing technique acupuncture how often do the therapists experience these these different treatments and who are they aspiring to or learning from and I think it's we look after our clients we look after each other um and I think it, it, I am echoing what you say really I just it's really important to me I always found that my best teams worked well when they were looked after well. I think it's I think it's super important, especially now that the business of wellness doesn't take over the experience of wellness and the especially the language. Like I've always been super conscious that the language of wellness does not become the language of C19. The language of wellness is exclusive <laughs> to us and 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 Just to it, us. <laughs> just to us in a well, wellness group um but yeah it's it's the experience of wellness shouldn't shouldn't overtake the business of it mm -hmm. that's well said very well said i'm uh i'm really looking forward to next month because i'm going to the global wellness summit it's being held in florida instead of israel but i'm actually going to be in a room with other colleagues and people and I'm going to appreciate it in a way that I never I... would have before I mean I love to going but it's like just to be with my people and be able to be in person <laughs> even with masks on is going to be awesome amazing yeah and you must come back Lisa and share sort of the, the learnings from that but I think you're absolutely right I think you know we you said it as well Jennifer we, we took so much for granted um you know touch connection that social sort of interaction um, and I think that that's the bit that any of us, no matter what we do for a living, no matter what our sort of personal circumstances are, that's the bit we've kind of all sort of craved and, and sort of missed, missed the most. And yeah. um, I have a deck of cards. Somebody sent me this beautiful little <coughs> brilliant, talented, fabulous and wonderful. And in it is a load of kind of insight cards. So I thought actually what I'm going to do to end the session um, is just pick one, see where it lands. Because Perfect. Why not? Okay. <laughs> this one says, oh. Determination, interesting. No matter how capable a person is, no important goal has ever been achieved without determination. It is the drive to fulfill our potential, the ability to concentrate on what needs to be done without distraction. It is what separates the merely talented from the achiever of greatness. Oh. That's this week's. And then we all need it <laughs> we now. Got, so that's we, we got 52. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do our horoscopes next week. <laughs> Have you got 52 of those, Michelle? No, I've got a few, yeah. yeah. Few. I left them in the box up until now, and I thought, okay, I must start to use them. I love the idea, and we must sort of draw them out. But listen, um, thank you so much for all of your time. Jennifer, Lisa Knoll, Shelley Hepburn, Lisa Starr, Nigel Franklin, and next month we will also be joined with Sonal Oberoi and Amy McDonald as well to fulfil the kind of full tribe. Um, but I thank you all so much for your time. I know it's precious, and I know we're all kind of running and still juggling, um, but I've really appreciated um, all of your energy and insight and hope everyone who gets to watch will also enjoy them too and that next month we'll come back and also be able to start ask answering some of the direct questions that we get in well the we thank you for doing this it's been so yeah. great to collaborate yeah, thank you uh, thank you michelle really thank this. you yeah it's been great thank, thank you. you so much everyone thank you, thank you. Bye. Thank see you, you soon bye-bye bye-bye